Hi, I'm Lino Grandi, 3D artist at Autoy, and in this video we're going to talk about some important things you need to know when starting using uh, Octane for Blender. Octane is an amazing render engine, and you know being able to use it for free up to one GPU in Blender, it's a great opportunity, and I really want you to have the best experience using it. Let's get started. So you can download your free Octane for Blender version from the Otoy website. You can just click on Render, Octane Render. Then now we are in the Octane Render section of the website. And here you will find the Try option. Select Prime, free tier, and as you can see, you'll be able to download uh, Octane for Blender, for DAS 3D, for Unity, for a real engine. And, you know, all those versions will be perfectly working up to one GPU. If you want to use more than one GPU, of course, you need a licensed uh, version. Uh, you can read the product specifications here, so you're aware of any limitation you may have. And yeah, let's click on Try Now. And from here, we can download uh, Octane for Blender. Octane for Blender is uh, divided in two different installers. The first one is the special Otoy version of Blender. And the second one is the Octane server, which is needed to uh, make um, Octane work in Blender. So, you know, you will install both, then launch the server, and then Blender. That's very important, but we will talk about it. There's an important reason why we're producing our custom uh, version of Blender. The first one is performances, and yeah, we've noticed that being able to uh, work on the, the Blender code directly uh, allows us to provide the maximum performances for Octane, uh, which is something you would not be able to achieve uh, through an add-on. And yeah, basically Octane in Blender is as fast as the standalone version, which is just great. So you can click on the version you want to download, and then, you know, Download it in the location you want. And same for the server. Now, something very important. Uh, when you install uh, both Blender and the server, be sure to do it in a very specific uh, folder. So give a proper name to it. Since you know we are updating um, the versions uh, quite often, so, you know, to align uh, our version to the one uh, which is officially released by Blender Foundation. So, you know, you may, uh, you need to be sure that you're using the right uh, server version with the right Blender version. That's why, I, you know, on my taskbar, I have, you know, several couples of both Blender and uh, server. In some cases I have two, but ju that's just because, you know, I am uh, in the development team, so I have to test uh, several versions before they are released. So yes, be sure, you know, to, to name your folders properly when you install the two programs. As you can see here, I have the Octane Server Enterprise, because I'm using, of course, a, a licensed uh, version and the corresponding Blender version. And I named the, the, the folders you know, using the Blender version name, uh, which is 2.83.2, .2, and the Octane version, which is 2020.1.4. So I can be totally sure about where I've installed the two versions, and I can use them without, you know, being afraid of mismatching them. 
So once you have installed both uh, Octane for Blender and the Octane server, you have to launch them. I normally had the XA of each software to my taskbar. So let's launch the Octane server. You should be able to see it here in the ashtray. And as you can see, the current status is set to deactivate it. Right? That's perfectly normal. Now we can launch Blender. And the status, if we check the status now, you can see it's set to activate it. Uh, that happens because I already you know, entered my email and my password for the license. Uh, in in Blender, you know that happens the first time you uh, launch Blender, obtain Blender, you'll be asked, you know, to input your credentials basically of your free tier. So my Blender is already set up to work with Octane. When you launch Blender for the first time, you will get something more similar to this with a uh, box, you know, in the scene. So let's see what uh, you have to do to properly set up uh, everything you need to be able to work uh, with Octane in Blender. Something we need to consider is that if you have the same Blender version already installed in your system, both versions are going to share the same configuration file. That is not a problem in general. I don't have separated config files. Um, I prefer, you know, I, I have everything set up to use Octane. So that's, uh, that's why you, you can see the render engine is already set to Octane here. I have all the color correction option set properly and so on. So first thing um, you have to do to be able to select Octane as a render engine, probably you will have Eevee as you know um, default uh, render engine, is to open the preferences and look for Octane. If it's not already activated, you will have to activate it. Here you can see some options you can you know access but in general as you know you'll be able to select Octane among the other available render engines. As you select Octane for the first time your kernel type will be set to direct lighting. My advice is to set it to Pathrace which offers uncompromised and unbiased render quality and you know to change some uh, of the options here well you should just change the gi clamp value which normally is set to a very high value like 1 million you can set it to 5 or 10 you know that that's going to be enough and work really well so next we should adjust our color correction options so let's take a look at my color management options here here you can see I've set my display device to sRGB, which is totally correct, and the view transform to row. This is very important. We don't want any uh, correction to be applied by Blender to the Octane render because uh, Octane uh, just manages uh, color correction by itself with you know using its own tools. So let's let's see what happens if I set the view transform to something else than row, like filmic, for example. Let me add yeah an object. Let's activate the preview. You can see the render is all washed away. It's just too bright. It's wrong. It really looks wrong. Um, so if we set view transform to row, we will get the correct. Um, render, but also a correct OpenGL. You know, if we 
set this to standard or filmic and the display doesn't change at all but you know some people were using known as a display device when working in octane but you can see the the open gel now it's really really dark so display device to sRGB so our open gel looks um, right and view transform set to row so the color correction will not affect the render in octane in any possible way then something I always do is to divide my screen in different areas I normally put here a shader editor and I do the same here adding another shader editor dedicated to to the world okay so if we turn on the preview we see the effects of the word settings currently in use so we basically have a daylight environment uh, attached to the octane environment here and the sound direction attached to the sun direction into the daylight environment you know you can change the the local time and do all kind of stuff while here of course you will get your material network once you create a material for your object so let's add something to the scene like a plane for example let's assign a new material let's move the toroid up a little bit uh, let's make it smooth and let's assign a subdivision modifier I use control 3 to add a modifier a subdivision modifier you know you can easily create a new world environment simply clicking here this is going to duplicate uh, the kernel one which means basically that yeah we can like change something here and go back to the previous one or you can totally you know get rid of um, what we have and just it new in this case you get a texture environment attached to the octane environment if you want to add a daylight you just have to edit and you know attach it so again you can change the sun direction pretty easily using the control here or if you want you can attach a sun direction node so to control precisely the local time, the latitude, the longitude and so on. Here you also have other controls like you know the power for the lighting or you know the north offset. Pretty straightforward. But again you can decide to just use uh, a background color. You can also use the texture environment which is mainly used uh, to attach HDRI images. So I'm going to drag an HDRI into the World Shader Editor and I'm going to attach it to the texture input in the texture environment. As you can see, everything is very overexposed. That's because the gamma should be set to 1. So now the lighting looks correct and it works as it should you can see the the HDRI lighting working perfectly so we basically set up our environment something really important I didn't mention before is that as you have defined all your options for the render for the color management I know the the subdivision of your screen you should save your uh, startup file 
So you click on the Save Startup file, and then you confirm that you want to save the current configuration as the default one. That's very, very important. In the next videos, we'll go through some very simple scene and examples in Octane for Blender that will help us learn some of the tricks and rules you need to know to work with this amazing render. So, see you next time.